Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, technical writer here at Trihedral Engineering. One of the most fundamental concepts in VT SCADA is the fact that every new application is always built on top of another application. It inherits all of the tags, the tag types, the widgets, the pages, the reports, everything else from the underlying layers. At the bottom of the stack is the VT SCADA layer. And that's where you're going to find the definitions of pretty much everything you see in this program. Now, before I continue, let's make sure that we've got the words straight. A layer is an application, any application, and any application can be a layer. But for this video, when I say the word application, I mean the one on top, the one the operators see. And when I use the word layer, I refer to any of the ones further down the stack, which are contributing useful features to the one on top. Now, it's that last thing I said, contributing useful features. That's what makes this whole concept so important. If you're an OEM uh, developer, a system integrator, and you're creating applications for uh, a number of customers, you're probably going to find that you can save a lot of time by creating a library of useful objects and then reusing that library in your many different applications. A layer is perfect for that. Or perhaps you work at a utility. You're managing a number of sites and you want to ensure a standardized SCADA HMI functionality across all those sites. A layer can help. Or if you've got a couple of developers working for you and you want to uh, have a clear boundary between what they can change and what they can't, a layer fits the bill. So for all those reasons and more, let's take a look at how it works. On my workstation, I've got a, uh, an application that I'm calling the full OEM source. Now that contains a custom page, a custom widget, and a, a custom tag type. I'm going to create a brand new application built on that. Using the advanced option, I can create a brand new application that I'll call the, uh, the work application. And that will use the type full OEM source thereby building on top of this layer. And of course, that one was built on top of the VT SCADA layer. Continuing on and starting the application. Now, that'll just take a moment to load. In the meantime, I've got the full OEM source application running, and we're going to be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two of them. When the work application starts, I'll resize this so I can compare my two side by side here. And I can see that I have all of the pages, the widgets, the tags, and everything else from the full OEM source available to build on without having to do all of my work in a single application. Now, that's pretty useful just in itself. And if nothing ever changed, that would be the end of this video. But things do change and it's how those changes are handled that you need to be aware of. Opening the tag browser in my work application, any tags that were in the OEM layer show up here. So this instance of the TCP port and Modbus are visible and available. Now there's an important point right there. If you do not want you know, development instances to be available in the, uh, the child applications, you need to make sure you go back and clean things up before you distribute that application to be built on. Or if you do want those tags to be there, well, here they are. Now, notice that I did say these tags show up. I did not say we're copied here. Although for most practical reasons, it's pretty much hard to tell the difference. But let me open the properties of my virtual Modbus and we'll take a look. If I were to change the description, just one property of this uh, tag, and I'll call this the work description. We'll just save that and see what happens in a moment or two. And while I'm here, I'm also going to create an instance of that child tag. Um, I believe I called it the gizmo, gizmo type. And we'll just call this the local gizmo won't bother with very much configuration. But I wanted to create something locally to have in the work application. All right, 
we'll close the tag browser, switch back to the full OEM source application, and open the tag browser there. Naturally, I, I don't see the gizmo tag because that's in the, the child application. But let's open up this Modbus driver, and here I'm going to make two changes. I'm going to change the same field that I did in the work description. I'll call this the OEM description. And I'm going to put in a, a number for the uh, help source key. Now, that number won't do anything. I just need something to show a change. Close in the tag browser. And going back over to the work application, notice I've done nothing other than switch applications. If I open up the tag browser here, I see that I kept the local gizmo. So making a change to the tag browser in the OEM source did not overwrite any tags I created in this, uh, this dependent application. If I open up the uh, virtual Modbus uh, driver, I'll see that I kept the description that I created here, but the change that was made in the OEM layer was inherited. So this is point number one. Any tags that I create in the work application are mine, and I keep them regardless of what changes in the OEM layer. As for the tags that were created in the OEM layer, I can see those tags, I can use those tags, and I can override the properties of the OEM layer's tags. And I'll keep my overrides if the OEM layer is updated. But for those OEM layer tags, anything that I haven't overridden in the dependent application will continue to use the properties that are defined in the OEM layer. And those will change through all the dependent applications if the OEM layer changes. Now, that also leads into point number two. An application that's based on an OEM layer continues to depend on that OEM layer forevermore. You cannot run the work application anywhere unless the layer that it was built upon is also present. Now, tags have unique IDs, so it's easy for VTSCADA to know which tag is which and to keep track of the properties of them all. The things that you draw on pages and in the widgets, well, they work differently. A rectangle does not get a unique ID, and neither does a widget. So if you move something around, VTSCADA has no way to know that this rectangle is the same as that one, but with its coordinates changed. So let's see how pages work, keeping in mind that anything I say about pages is also true for your custom widgets. I'm going to start by editing a page in the OEM layer. Now, I'll just take these lines that I've drawn and very quickly change the, uh, the outlines so that they look a little bit different. As soon as I close the Idea Studio, the work application shows that change. Now, if you don't see this change back in your own system, um, you may need to restart the work application. Whether or not a restart is required for a page change, well, that does depend on the version of ETSCADA that you're running. Older versions would require an application restart sometimes in order to see a change in a page. There's something else here. What if I edit the same page in the work application? Now, as soon as I open that page in the Idea Studio, what happens is that I create a local copy of the page. It's sort of like the description field of my driver tag that I changed earlier, except that instead of creating an override of just one property, I'm creating an override of the entire page. Now, even if I don't change anything here at all, simply close the Idea Studio window. If I were to go back to my OEM source, make a change here, and then save this, I will never see that change now in my work copy. The reason is that I've got my own local copy of the entire page. So, this is something you do need to be aware of when you're planning your OEM system of whether or not you want to distribute source code. Because if the source code is available, this is possible. Now, that's enough for one video. We've seen the basic concepts. In part two of this series, 
you'll see the options for distributing your OEM layers and what control you have over what can or cannot be overridden.